Tim, we're here in Crete, incredibly beautiful, uh, at a conference physics of uh, fine tuning, and much of the fine tuning deals with cosmology, um, 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 fa figures, facts, um, structures, relationships in cosmology which seem to be fine tuned, um, and the various meanings of that. Uh, as a philosopher of physics, when you look at that array of things going on, how, how, how would you begin to analyze the totality of the picture? Not the details, but the, the, the whole essence of the, of the project. So I, I guess the, the way cosmology comes into the fine-tuning problem is the fine-tuning problem is usually about things we think of as the constants of nature taking uh, values that had to be in a very, very narrow range in order to produce complexity, to produce an interesting universe in any way. And that seems oddly coincidental, right? worryingly coincidental, that they happen to hit this sweet spot. One way of trying to relieve that puzzlement is to imagine that, no, there's a huge variety of parts of physical reality where the things we think of as constants actually take different values and just randomly choosing among the possible values if there are an infinite number of these things then you'll hit the sweet spot just by luck an infinite number of times and any observers that exist will of course only be able to evolve in those environments and then you have an explanation for why we see complexity around us so i think that's a, a a good project. It's a clearly an explanatory theory if you can get it to work. It turns out that there are pieces of physics that suggest all, all on their own and independently of these considerations that maybe something like that could happen. And so you want to look carefully at it and see maybe that's, maybe that's the right conclusion to draw from these fine-tuning observations. As you know, some people would draw um, teleological or theistic um, uh conclusions or, 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 or uh, support consistent right. with, nobody really says, says it proves God, but consistent with if there were a designer uh, a type of uh, universal structure. Um, and some of these people, physicists too, although certainly not a majority, would claim that part of the motivation for the multiverse is to undercut a teleological or theistic argument. Do you find that to be the case? Um, look, th there's theology that arises out of traditional religion, uh, like the Bible. And I think the account there, even if you wanted to believe in a God, a designer God, that account is just off the table. Why? Because in that account, God created the entire universe with us in mind. And you look at the universe and it just, no rational being would create this universe with us in mind. We live in a little neighborhood of some galaxy. There are all these other galaxies. There's all this other stuff around. Why would you go to the trouble to create all that and go through all the dinosaurs and go through all the history and so on for us? So I think the, so, the, the religious so I, I thing, thing, thing is... Okay. I, I can make up a reason Okay. I can make up a reason. I can say that, well, first of all, you need a, 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 a huge uh, galaxy to have a supernova to spew out the, the heavy elements that we need for life. And I, I can put a philosophical tone. I could say if I were God, you know, give, give me this for a second, yeah. that uh, I want to show uh, uh, the human beings the, the enormity of reality, that uh, the, the awesomeness. If it was just a, a small world where people thought and the firmament was just sort of a, ca a capstone on the earth, uh, you know, that, that's, uh, that's one con concept. But to show this vast universe is, a, is an awesome feeling. I mean, we, all, we all feel that awesomeness, and if maybe God wants to put us in that condition. Yeah, I think this is terminal narcissism. <laughs> I mean, maybe we're a byproduct, uh, an accidental byproduct of God being interested in doing something else and creating something on some galaxy way over there. And we just, yeah. we just come, up, come up by accident as a side effect. Yeah. I mean, this idea that we have to put ourselves at the center of everything, it was all done for our sake. I, I think that's just kind of lunacy when you look at the world. I know what kind of world would be created by a God who is considering us, and it isn't this one. So maybe there's a designer, the idea that there's a designer who is designing for us, I think is just off the table. It's completely incredible given what we found out about what the universe is like. So from a standpoint of, uh, of uh, working physicists in the field, how, how does a philosophy of cosmology help the development of cosmology? Well, philosophy generally can help science just by clarifying concepts, by noticing when words are being used in ambiguous ways, by being particularly precise about exactly what the conditions for the uses of terms are. 
that comes up a lot in this in this particular field uh, as it comes up in other places in foundations of physics. So that's certainly one place where, where philosophy can be helpful.